Hey everyone, this is Walt Bayless with the Business and People podcast. Do you have a dry mouth? Have you lost your words? Do you know not what to say? Then you're in the right place at the right time. I have the speaker's coach, founder and president of the Speakers Association, Mr. George Henley on the line with me. We're going to talk about communication. We're going to talk about confidence. We're going to talk about getting your message out into the world. And even if the thought of being a public speaker terrifies you to your very soul, you are about to learn how the skills and the, and the uh, opportunities presented to you in the business world are going to see you on the right path. Welcome to the podcast to the Speakers Coach, Mr. George Henley. Wow. I love that introduction. That is high energy and powerful. Thank but you, Walter. Mean, you can, you I, can I'm ready that. to rock can, and roll. You can have that playing as you come out of the bedroom in the morning. <laughs> like You can just have it in all the speakers. You can make that your entrance into every room. Probably not because I'm up an hour before my wife and that might just not uh, reverberate well with her as well as my two furry friends that are in my room as well. Right, cool. No worries. Hey, hey Walt, I'm, I'm really excited to be here with you tonight and I know our time together is going to be valuable because every time we have a, a chance to talk, meaning me and you or me and one of the people that I talk to on a variety of podcasts, we begin to dispel some of the myths that go with public speaking. Absolutely. And help people begin to relax and enjoy this wonderful opportunity. You know, one of the things I say, and I say it regularly, public speaking, or basically what you and I are doing right now, is the new social media. What do yeah, I mean? Sure. Very simply, what has been old is new again. And this is the greatest low-tech, high-touch type of communication that you got going. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely, George. And you know, one, one of the things that, that, that I come across all the time, especially when we're talking about public speaking, is that people will say to you, uh, I'm in a tech company, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a coder, I'm a whatever, I don't have any need to learn those skills. And what they're actually saying to me is that I'm too scared to look at it. But George, <laughs> tell me that I'm wrong. Tell me that I'm wrong. Every single person that finds themselves in a leadership role, in a sales role, in an entrepreneurial space, have the opportunity to reach a wider and bigger audience just by, by dynamically changing some of these skills that we can talk about, yeah? Yeah, I mean, let's think about some of the biggest earth movers, people changers of all history. If you go back through recorded time, before there was this thing called social media or the internet, if you go back just even 70 years as an example, there was a guy in the little country of Great Britain who marshaled the entire country of Great Britain and also helped get, I believe, the Americans on board with him to fight for the freedom of the world. His name was Winston Churchill. And Winston Churchill was one of the greatest speakers of all time, especially the 20th century. But even before him, you had guys like Gandhi. You had guys like Abraham Lincoln. You, I'm sure there are some big names in, in Australia that I'm really not aware of, but you have people all over the world who have moved millions by the spoken word, and they're still doing it today. They're still doing it today. Absolutely. And George, as we look at that big picture, you know, we can... The people who are listening to the show, you know, they're in their car right now or they're on the treadmill before they start work in the morning, tapping into a podcast. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. But you know what? We're talking about touching the world. We're touching, talking about reaching out. And I want to I just grab that. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to bring that into such a finite point, George. I'm going to bring that down to laser atom focus. Because as we talk about communication, as we talk about being able to express your message, it doesn't have to be the world. It doesn't have to be the United Nations. What it has to be is you as a father, as a mother, as a student, as a teacher, being able to accurately and in, without doubt communicate your soul to the person that's sitting across from you in that one-on-one. -on -one. That's as important as leading the world in a, in a global charge. Yeah, so, so let's just talk about that word public as in public speaking. The word public literally means the people. So I am publicly speaking to you because you're a people, I'm a people. Anytime you have a one-on-one -on -one conversation, you're speaking in public because yes. today we know anybody can take what you say and run with it and share it all over the world. And, and, and it can be literally across the oceans and around the world in a matter of seconds Absolutely. with social media. Yeah, so today, more than ever, we have an opportunity to impact 
a lot of people, but the message always comes back to me communicating with you, you communicating with me. We are doing a one-on-one -on -one that then can go out and reverberate. It's like the old dropping a pebble in the pond and it ripples and ripples and ripples to all the shores, no matter how big that pond might be. I completely agree. So let's take these people, George, on a journey and let's help some people communicate better and, and uh, you know, really get their message across. And of course, guys, as you're listening to this, you can find out about George uh, at the Speakers Academy uh, on Facebook.com, which is the speakers, Facebook.com forward slash the Speakers Academy. And of course, the Speakers Academy dot com as well. Let's take some people on a journey, George. If you had, Good deal. we're sitting right now with an entrepreneur and they're thinking to themselves, my God, I've got a presentation next week. This is going to kill me. I'm, I've got it. You know, I'm, maybe I'm presenting to a board <laughs> of VC funders. Uh, I've never spoken outside of, of, of my public walls in, in, in my life. How are you going to take that person, George, and help them with some quick tips that they might be able to just really nail that presentation next week without going into a full course? How are we going to take them right now and help them move that forward? Okay, there are two principles, and I want to hit these as we begin talking about that. The principles are called recency and primacy, recency and primacy. So the two most important parts of any presentation, whether it's a 30 second, a three minute, 30 minute, three hours, it is the beginning and the end, recency and primacy. Primacy is the beginning where we start. Recency is how we close. Those are the two things that people remember the most. So when you're planning a preparation or a presentation, you begin with the end in mind, and that means what is the purpose of my message? Even in my little 30-second elevator speech, which I give all the time, networking groups, meeting people one-on-one, -on -one, et cetera, et cetera. I always think in terms of what is my purpose? Very simply, I want to be able to make a connection that is memorable and is conversational and puts them at ease with who I am and what we're doing together. My, my, my introduction very simply is, hi, I'm George Inley, founder of the Speakers Academy. I work with business leaders just like you who want the skills and confidence to inspire and influence their listeners. Does that sound like you? If it does, let's have a conversation. Yeah, nice. Absolutely. And that your, your development of that elevator pitch, I'm sure that that's not something that you just came up with overnight. But so, so now we've got primacy, right? We've got, we've got the opening way of communicating. And, and your, your biggest tip there is to plan it, to find, to literally just to lay something out that outlines your reasons for having this conversation. Yes, absolutely. If it's possible, and I say, not always the case, but if it's possible, and if you've got a little bit of a longer presentation, let's just say three minutes, five minutes, whatever it might be, but start with a story, end with a story, and if the two stories can overlap and be linked together, so much the better. That Walt is like wrapping a beautiful present and tying it off with a bow, so it is, in a sense, all held together wow. in a wonderful, memorable, easy to digest and easy to assimilate type of way. So wow, I love that. It's stories that are memorable and capture people's attention, and it's stories that we all thrive on day to day. Absolutely. I mean, think back to the time when you were reading little kid stories to your children, no matter what their age. And, and perhaps your parents did the same for you. Bottom line, those stories, we can remember the story. I don't know if they, I guess you tell this in Australia, the, the big, the bad wolf and the yeah. three little pigs. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, Goldilocks and the three bears. All of these stories resonate because there is a theme, there's a purpose, there is a challenge involved in the story, and those things capture people's minds and they can quickly relate to it and hold on to it. So, so stories really do the job well. I love it. So just like straight out of the gate, what we can do is help people's presentations by remembering these simple things. So we start with primacy. Let's start with a story about how you got to where you are. Let's, and then we talk about recency. That's just the thing they're going to remember the last when you're finishing this presentation, no matter if it's 30 seconds or five minutes or 30, when they're finishing the presentation, they're going to remember the last thing you said. And if that story, the last story that you tell as part of your presentation links together with the first part, then straight away without any kind of structure in terms of how we do the presentations themselves, we've moved people from an A to B straight away with the, with the increase in, in their ability to communicate. 
Absolutely. Behind me over my shoulder, there's a bookcase. On that bookcase are a number of trophies, if you will. And two in particular are special to me because they represent a good 10 to 11 years of work towards a, an accomplishment that I had seen at least 12 years that, before that point in time. And why they are relevant to me and even relevant to you is because I was seated at the table with my good friend, an Australian wonder man, a, a great guy who I've, I've known for over 20 years, and he and his team were going up to the stage to receive their diamond level award and I sat there and punched one of his mates next to me I said I'm going to be there one day nice. and I was it took me about a decade to make it but I was there and I still got the proof sitting on the top of my bookshelf <laughs> over there so bottom line what we say always begins with a vision for what we want to try to communicate. Yeah. And that vision begins to take form in simple words and stories that then relate to people and what they can potentially do. Remember I said earlier, I'm working with business leaders who want to inspire, yeah, inspire. Definitely. And inspiration is all about breathing in life into others around you. And mm. if you could do that, People will follow your lead. Absolutely. So now as we're talking to our group here, George, we've got the people listening on the podcast right now, no matter when that might be, there's going to be a section of people that are listening that say, you know what? I don't ever need to do that. Great. Fantastic. What we're talking about are the people who need to get their message and be able to communicate that more effectively. So there's all, and as your story uh, highlights right there, it begins with a vision. This is where I'm headed. And your ability to take a group of people with you. Now, every, not every, but so there's so many of the, the podcast interviews that we've done, George, with business leaders, entrepreneurs, founders of big companies, talk about their team. So we say, you know, what, what, what's taken you and your success forward? How have you been able to achieve that? When we've talked to, to Olympians and, and uh, NASA astronauts even, what they've talked about is it's not just them, it's that team. And so when we think, we, we, you and I are talking right now, we're saying, here's an entrepreneur, here's a visionary. The ability to communicate your message using stories, as we talked about, is going to help you craft that team. Even if you don't have one now, you need a team of people to achieve the success that you are desiring somewhere in the future. And so take these words from George, take this ability to be able to communicate so that you can see how you can bring your team forward towards that end goal, yeah? Yeah, so my team actually began forming over 60 years ago. Wow. In, in the kitchen of our old farmhouse outside of my hometown. And it began forming because there was a lady standing at the sink washing dishes and talking to me as I came home from kindergarten. And that lady happened to be my mom. And my mom was asking me questions about how my day at school went. And she knew I had a, a, a little bit of a lisp and a, a stutter that made my communication dip difficult to get out but yeah. she continued to lead me and encourage me and, and show me that I could communicate my thoughts my ideas and do so in a confident way and be able to impact others down the road so that part of my team began 60 plus years ago and I've built on that with sisters and a brother and a much greater entourage of people around me friends like you literally all over the world who have been a part of feeding me to be where I am today. And I'm Fantastic. extremely grateful for that. Wow, that's so cool. Like being able, looking at you as the founder, the president of the Speakers Academy, 27 years of George Henley presentations to come from having a, a difficulty with your speech, the people on your team supporting you to now where you are, that is an amazing journey. No wonder you love Winston Churchill. I think, uh, do, you, <laughs> do you remember that the, the movie called The King's Speech? Oh, I loved that yeah, movie. Absolutely. absolutely. When Winston yeah. comes on and, and uh, the king actually says to him, how did you get past it? And he said, I turned it into a strength. You know, the, the <laughs> speech, I think that's absolutely fantastic. So George, when we're talking to this group of people and we're talking about communicating, we, we've said already to, to be able to, to start with a story, to be able to end with a story. What are the other components that make up a confident speaker? Good deal. So every presentation has one of four primary purposes. 
And it's important that we again set up, I have a visual that I send out to people in the early stages of when I'm working, training or coaching them. That visual is a tree. And that visual helps people get a, a great understanding of what are the elements, the parts, the pieces of a great presentation. When you look at a tree, the first thing you typically see if you're up close to it is this thing called a trunk. Mm -hmm. And that trunk is supporting everything that's above it. And the trunk relates to what is your purpose for this presentation. Again, mm -hmm. the purpose can be very simple as in I want to inform or I want to inspire or I want to influence or I want to entertain or I want to do a combination of one of those four. Mm -hmm. And every presentation we make, whether it's you speaking to your wife, to your child, to your friends, to your clients, every single presentation we make is made up of one or a combination of more of those four various elements. That is our purpose. And if we stay true to our purpose, then people begin to see, wow, I get his point. Now, beyond that, I say there are three V's at the top of that tree. Those three V's are the visual, the vocal and the verbal, the visual, the vocal, and the verbal. And I teach this because it helps people simplify the whole elements of what they're doing as, as, as far as the speaker goes. Now, I ask you, Walt, out of those three, the visual, the vocal, and the verbal, which do you feel is the most important one for an effective presentation? I am going to say my own opinion would be the visual. Walt? Fist bump. Boom. Nice job. Boom. Why do you say that? That's right, by the way. Why do you say that? Because I feel, again, this is personal opinion, I feel that so much of our brain's energy is taken up by what our eyes can see. So from a communication point of view, it feels to me that when I'm, when I'm looking at somebody talking, I'm listening to a presentation, I, I'm feeling the majority of that communication come through from what I see first. Yes, and you're absolutely right. And here's the critical, uh, yeah, there you go, yeah. celebrate that. It feels good to be right. Celebrate, because if people are able to watch what you and I are doing, they don't sit, sit, see two guys that are sitting here going, hello, Walt, <laughs> it's sure good to see you tonight. <laughs> I hope we have a good time on this podcast. They see two guys who are electric, who are lit up, who are actively engaged with our hands, our face, our entire body. And that visual is the element that starts the connection with someone. Think yeah. about looking at people from a good 40, 50, 60 meters. You're getting a visual and you're starting to subconsciously do what? A judge. Make, analyze. Make, 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 analyze. Judge. You're judging or analyzing them. Friend or foe. Absolutely. If they look like they could be friend, then we begin to look at a variety of other things. So there are five simple basic elements in the visual. Attire and grooming. Yep. Posture and position. Uh, gestures, which is all about body language. Facial expression. And then the last one, eye connection. So we go from a, a long distance view up to a very, very, very close facial view. But there it is again, attire and grooming, posture and position, gestures, uh, uh, facial expression, and then eye connection. That is, those are the five most basic elements of who you are from a visual. And we haven't even begun to talk about the vocal yep. or the verbal. Yep. But if you've got those five, and you really have those down. And I'll say probably one of the most important, if you're really in what I call an intense type of delivery, it's the facial expression and the eye connection. Absolutely. Because people watch the face and they especially look at the eyes. And the philosophers have said for ages, the eyes are the windows of the soul. Mm. And we look at our audience's eyes and they look at our eyes to, to determine or distinguish. Can I be trusted? And if they, there's any glint or glimmer of a distrust, they will turn off, 
tune out and you've lost them from that point forward. Absolutely. Absolutely. So there are five simple things to remember from a visual perspective. Would you like to hear about the vocal and the verbal? I would love to. So, but uh, as we get off the visual, dress well, dress appropriately, watch your facial expressions, make sure you've got great eye contact and, and you pretty much can nail the visual, right? So, so just easy things, tick box off. Now I'm going to come back to this in a second, George, because you, you good, and I are both good. animated. You and I are like, really, this is, this is how we speak. This is how we are. I'm going to come That's back right. to that in a second because a lot of people aren't, and I'm going to deal with that in just a second. But before we do, do, let's talk about the verbal and let's talk about the, the vocal. Vocal. The vocal and the verbal, yeah. So second to the visual is the vocal. And the vocal is basically the sound, Mm. the sounds that emanate from our voice. And those sounds can either turn people on and draw them in or turn them off and want them to get away from you. Yeah. So there are, again, four simple principles of the vocal. The volume, the inflection, the pacing, and the pitch, the volume, inflection, pacing, and pitch, VIPP. And there it is again. It's nothing complex. Yeah. Everybody knows that they have the ability to control their volume. I can speak like this. I'm in a whisper, but you can probably still hear me. So, okay. so we, can, yeah, yeah, we can bring our volume way up or we can bring it way down. And it's time or it's at times we want to modulate our volume as an up and down thing where it's not same volume monotone all the time secondly inflection is all about the emphasis that we're putting on a word or a phrase and that makes all the difference in the light of whether or not someone feels connected with us or rejected by us so the emphasis on a word or even a syllable makes the difference in light of how that word or phrase comes forth to them i can say i love you or i love you or I love you. Same words, but the inflection or emphasis is different. Third is the pacing, which is all about the speed. I can slow it down and talk like I'm from East Texas, or I can speed it up and say, hey, mate, glad to see you. Let's rock and roll tonight. Ah!" And, 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 And be really, really quick. And then finally, the pitch. It has been found with research that a deeper, more resonant pitch, such as a James Earl Jones or a Morgan Freeman is more believable, acceptable, and by, B-U-I, B-U-Y worthy. So those four things right there, volume, inflection, pacing, and pitch. Wow. So, so straight away, we go from visual, making sure that you tick those little boxes. And then when we move into the, the vocal, we can start to, we can start to move into ways of controlling the way we talk. So, and again, we, it can be face to face in that one and one environment. It can be a, to a board of directors. It can be a room full of people, but these are things that are in your control, being able to change your volume and making sure that you are having that sound wave. So rising and falling. So we've got that That's right. interest, the ability to capture. We've got the infliction, how you communicate. We've got the pitch and the pace and all of these things are in your control. So thinking Completely. about the way that you, the way that you speak is unique to you. Every single person right. is going to have their own signature on their voice. But That's things right. that they can control are going to simply help with their, with their buy-ness, with their worthiness and the, the message that they're getting across with other people. So ch- take a look at the way you're talking. Take a look at the inflection, the tone, the pace, all that kind of stuff. And then try and think about the best way you can use those tools to get across to your audience. I love it. Now let's talk about the actual the words. The verbal. The verbal. Yeah, the verbal. So, so unfortunately, a lot of people tend to think it's all about using special words. Mm. Not really. It's, it's in the verbal thing. We have two things really to think about. Just two things. One is the elimination of fluff and filler. Got it. Um, Walt, just have you ever just thought about perhaps maybe uh you know um and uh and, and what about everybody's and, tuning you know, off right mate? now mate stay, stay with us guys i can <laughs> i can feel the people reaching for the dial there whoa so it is removing the fluff in the filler by the way mm. i went into the bathroom a few minutes ago brushed my teeth made sure there wasn't any lettuce in there from dinner <laughs> 
so, so that that wouldn't be clouding the image of my furry face right now. But, it, you know, fluff and filler is like lettuce in your teeth or a, yeah. a booger hanging off your nose. It is not something you want to have lacing your language. Nice. It will distract. It will even destroy the message and the meaning of the message. And wow. then finally, how do you do that? With the words themselves, with the planning, I guess. The pause. Oh, I like it. The emphasis. The pause. We tend to be in a noisy world, Walt. And in radio or television, silence is deadly, yeah. but not in conversation. And tonight, because you and I can see each other, we know I can see you. You can see me. We haven't gone anywhere. And a, a well placed pause for emphasis as well as slowing down the language where people can really grasp the meaning helps me eliminate the fluff and the filler yeah it's definitely. beautiful i it's love it beautiful. i can feel it and do you know what as we look at that um one of, george i've done a lot of speaking on stage and i i talk a lot uh, using the metaphor of a tree and i i love the fact that you've built your ability to to communicate using that same metaphor but one of the Super. things that struck me as we're talking about this we've got the trunk right mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and and then we're talking about all of these other things the the, the visual being able to prepare yourself and look mm -hmm. the right way and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff mm -hmm. having your practice with your tone and then having the words and then the uh, of themselves but here's the key tell me if i'm right or wrong the strength in the middle of your presentation comes from your roots your knowledge about the subject that you're talking about the the strength and everything else flowing from that has to come from right within you so rule number one if you're if you're entering into this communication to picture that tree and make sure that your trunk is solid yeah amen so <laughs> i use a simple word acronym s-a-y 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 say know your subject know your audience Know yourself, know your wow. subject, know your audience, know yourself. Those three simple words encapsulates what you need to know to be authentic, to be genuine, to be relevant, to be believable. Absolutely. If you've really got your subject, if you really know your audience, and lastly, and this is actually most importantly, Walt, if you really know yourself. That's because it. I know I am not, quite frankly, I'm not a really well-versed keynoter. That's not my strength. So I stay away from doing something that I can't bring strength to the platform. And I go to where I'm already strong. And that means in the training, in the coaching, in the small group environment, that's where I can deliver my greatest message and my greatest package of doing good for other people. I love it. And this is going to transition back. Remember I said a few moments ago that I'll come back to this energetic side of things. And we're going to have people, George, as you know, who are listening to this, who say to you and I, you know what? I'm, I'm a quiet person. I'm a reserved <laughs> person. Right? I, I just, I, I do my thing. Do you know what? What I'm going to say to that person and, and, and back me up if, if I'm on the right path, correct me if I'm not. What I'm going to say to that person is the strength of your message comes from that acronym, say, know your subject, know your audience, know yourself. You don't have to be anybody that you're not to deliver an effective communication message. Some of the quietest speakers have the depth in their soul to communicate effectively. Wherever this message finds you, you're in the right place. You are unique. You have your own signature. What we're talking about in terms of the, the, uh, the visuals, the vocals and the verbals, what we're talking about in terms of the way of de delivering an effective presentation should never, ever, ever change who you are. Because if you try to be someone else, if you try to be all this on stage and you're not, if you try to be quiet and reserved and you're not, then the, the strength of your trunk is damaged by your own inability to, to wrap the, the bark around it. You know what I mean? So uh, again, correct me if I'm wrong, you know, endorse me if I'm right. Wherever this message finds you, whatever type of personality you are, your communication effectiveness can come from deep within, correct? 
Absolutely. There's a, a, a lady by the name of Susan Kane who has written a really terrific book. She's got a lot of great press and she is a quiet spoken introvert, but she's a polished speaker because she relates who she is. She's not loud. She's not boisterous. She's not bounce all over the stage. She is placed and platformed and professional, and she knows how to be herself. Knowing yourself is the first and critical piece in being able to deliver a message that is authentic and believable by the audience. If the movie Gandhi portrayed the man the way he was, he wasn't a live wire. He was quiet. He was soft-spoken, mm. but he was powerful because his actions portrayed the reality of who he was. So, folks, if you're listening to this, you've got George Henley on the loan from the Speakers Academy, one of the best speaking presentation coaches in the world. I hope you have the opportunity to go back and actually re-listen to some of these tips and how they relate to you. But, George, I'm going to do an, a little exercise with you right now. And I hope, you can, I hope you can help me out with this because our goal, okay. our goal is to take our listeners, our people that are watching this or listening to this, and help them no matter where we find them. So here's my exercise with you. We've yeah. talked about... Maybe we've got a presentation next week. We've got the guy who's killing himself and we've been able to say, let's talk about the visuals. Let's talk about the vocal. Let's talk about the verbal. Make sure your SAY trunk is solid, right? We've done that. But here's my challenge because everybody's looking for a quick fix. Everybody wants that. And we, know, we, can, we can say that that's wrong all we like. But here's the challenge. Your side stage right now, your side stage there's 10,000 people in the audience and you've got a CEO founder <laughs> just behind the curtains with you, rubbing their hands, pulling their hair out because they're just about to go on stage and you have just 20 seconds or 30 seconds to wrap your arms around that person and help them deliver the speech of their life. How are you going to take that person and give 30 years of presentation knowledge in 30 seconds. I'll say the same thing I've already said. I love it. Be your, be yourself. You There's cannot be any, you cannot be anyone else but yourself. That's and it. if you are genuine, if you are authentic, and if you have a great desire to serve that audience with who you are and what you are, you will do a fantastic job. That's all their expectation is. They want you to be good go out and be good. Do you know what? I, I, uh, I've studied martial arts for a long time and uh, I was at training last night with a young lady who's just about to get her black belt and she was as nervous as she could be. She, you know, she's worked eight years for this moment and she's as nervous as she can be. The, the grading is actually tomorrow. And the, the, the coach, the instructor said to us, are words that I've heard so many times before. You have already put in the work to be That's here. That's true. You have everything you need right now. There's nothing you can do between now and tomorrow that's going to change the outcome of this event. You, the reason that you are here is because you've done the work in all of those times. Now's the time to be authentic, to be yourself, and to perform at the very best of your abilities. And the reason I wanted to grab that, George, forgive me, the reason I wanted to lay that exercise on you is because it's not very often that we find ourselves side stage with somebody who's about to go in front of an audience of 10,000 people and give them a couple of words of wisdom. But it is very often that we find ourselves in a situation where the next message we're about to communicate can change a life. And I'm talking about a father, a mother, a brother, a sister, a colleague, a teacher, a friend, because you're not about to go on stage and speak to 10,000 people, but it doesn't mean that the message you're about to convey to your friend who needs you isn't just as important. And what you said, George, I'd like you to say it again, because putting it into that context of the phone call you're about to make or the conversation you're about to have with that employee or wife or husband or family member is just as important. Can you say what you said again to the person who's about to step on stage? Yeah. So if I may, I want to take it into a story form with you for a moment, yeah. Walt. <laughs> 20 years ago, my younger daughter, who was a teenager playing select soccer, and she was the goalkeeper, the goalie. 
and she was at the end of a game, and it was up to her to stop those goal shots against goal. And she was over on the sidelines getting a drink of water. I walked up to her, and she stands as tall as me, six foot two, and I put my arms up around her shoulders. I looked at her right in the eye and said, Allie, you can do this. Breathe, relax, focus, win. And Walt, she did it. Yay! <laughs> That's awesome. That's very cool. Breathe, relax. You're everything you need to be. And you know what? We, we, we're on this. We're on this podcast. We're on this interview talking about communication because I believe, I believe that the ability to communicate your message is one of key, the life's key skills. Just before we jumped on this call, I had the pleasure of, of uh, running another podcast interview and we were talking about happiness. We were talking about life's purpose. And I, I wanna say that in, a, in addition to understanding who you are and the impact that you can make in the world, the next step of that is being able to communicate that in the effective way that the world needs you to, whether you find yourself in a family situation, a school environment, a student environment, a business case, or on a stage with 10,000 people, what's inside of you needs to come out. And that's why we're talking yes. to George Hendler. Yes. And, and people have the ability. They just need someone like you who will put their arm around them, look them in the eyes and say, hey, I believe in you. That's it. Go out and win the game. That's it. Absolutely. And, and, and instill that confidence, that spark of inspiration, that little bit of courage that they needed to find within them to go do what they're already capable of doing. And over and over and over again, I have had so much pleasure in coaching such a wide variety of people. I mean, medical doctors, lawyers, CPAs, uh, attorneys, uh, financial planners, business coaches, you name it, I, I've coached them. And they all have that same dawning awareness that once they have that self-confidence and a few of the skill sets in process of development, they can go out and really capture the attention, interest, and believability of an audience. And it's magical. I love it, it's George. Magical. I absolutely love it. You already have everything you need to be. Be authentic, be yourself, and communicate with passion. Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, we're speaking with George Henley from the Speakers Academy. You can find out about George at thespeakersacademy.com or, of course, on facebook.com forward slash the speakers academy george thank you so much for the opportunity to talk with you to understand how communication can really effectively achieve goals move mountains change worlds around us and the the uh, the small changes that can be made in infliction in, in in visuals in vocals that can impact that message in such an important way george thank you so much for your time what's next for you what, what, what are the goals what are the horizons for you well, I, I'm continuing right now to broaden my horizons. Uh, I am starting to get a lot of great leads coming to me through LinkedIn. And so literally, I'm making connection with people all over the United States, and it's given me an opportunity to plant seeds with a lot of different people in a lot of different industries and giving them the, ch the chance to look at me as a potential assistant to them, a guide on the side, so that when they need someone who can coach and guide and lead them into great to success they know where to get me and, and that's an exciting part of what i'm doing right now in my business i love it george i love it and i think you know from for our audience the entrepreneurs the salespeople, the driven individuals that are listening you've got george on your sideline as your communications coach absolutely fantastic george thank you again man i really i've so enjoyed this conversation and for everybody that's listening go back listen to it again i know you're in your car i know you're in your treadmill i know you're busy right now <laughs> go and listen again to those little tips from george and if and change your communication it really is such a valuable skill george thank you again my friend i really appreciate it Walt, it was a pleasure i look forward to being able to send more people your direction so you can do these kind of incredible interviews with them as well I'd have a you. super day hey it's already thursday where you're at i'm closing out wednesday so i'm i'm catching up with you right, All right now. Man. we'll be waiting for you when you get it dude we'll be waiting <laughs> okay for you. thanks a lot george have a good one mate bye-bye